Here we go. Here we go. It's been a long time since I've compared a Ram Cummins with a Ford Power Stroke. And for 2023, you're in for a treat because Ford just came swinging for this model year. And well, Ram is still kind of chugging along with what they've always had since 2019. But hey, it is what it is. Let's let the testing do the talking. Special shout out to Larry H. Miller Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram here in Sandy, Utah, and Larry H. Miller Super Ford here in Salt Lake City. I know it says Provo, but it's actually Super Ford. Let's go ahead and drive the Ford first, and then we'll drive the Ram right after. All right, so here we go. I definitely can tell the difference in the cab size. I had to drive the Ram here today, and as soon as I jumped out of that truck and into this one, I looked around and was like, whoa. I feel like I'm in a mansion, but Ford has done some great things in this truck. Like I see heads up display, and I mean this truck has the locker out back, heated and ventilated seats come standard. On that Ram, ventilated seats are an option. And this truck has standard LED. Let's go ahead and talk about this power stroke, and then I'm gonna show you guys the zero to 60 afterwards. So here's the Mac Daddy power stroke. High output, big performance, and a lot of good cooling for this powertrain. 500 horsepower, 1200 pound feet of torque. Let's see how all that power gets put to the ground through that 10 speed transmission. Here we go. denying the power delivery with the power show truck has that 331 it's a locker out back and I feel as though that first gear all the way up to like the third gear you can really feel just how much power is being delivered through this powertrain it is scary or I should say drivetrain not powertrain it was being delivered through the drivetrain and I did notice a few times when I've driven these trucks in the past, I feel like the power delivery was kind of sloppy. And sometimes that's what happens when you have too much power going through the rear wheels. Like, if you didn't notice, this truck did actually spin the tires a little bit off the line there. And I have to admit, Ford is just, they're doing a great job right now. Does a truck really need 500 horsepower, 1200 pound pin of torque? Probably not, probably not. But it's just kind of cool to say, yeah, I have a Ford F-250 and has 500 horsepower, a lot more than the Ram does. 1,200 pounds of torque, a lot more than the Ram does. <laughs> yeah, and you can't get the high output Cummins on the Ram, which is probably a good thing. And the reason why is because of how heavy that transmission is behind the high output Cummins. But let's go ahead and talk about the weights on the door of this truck. And then I'll check back in when we get to the midpoint. So here are the numbers for the Ford. The front gross axle rating is 5,200 pounds. The rear is 6,340. 11,100 pounds is the gross vehicle weight rating. And then here is the total payload. Not sure where that 100 pounds came from. Normally it's like 11,000, but this one has 11,100 for some reason. So maybe it's for the high output power stroke. I don't know, but yeah, there's your payload. Now running at about 70 miles an hour, we're probably about 14 or 1500 RPMs in that ballpark. If you get up to about 75, right there, yeah, we're over 1500 now. And so that's the beauty of that rear axle ratio, 331, it is you know, higher gear, which means you're getting lower RPMs out back. Uh, running at 75 miles an hour, this truck has the 20 inch wheels. And I would say that, I mean, th this is what you can expect from these bigger trucks. You're gonna hear more of the road noise. You're gonna feel a little bit more bumps because of the suspension. But at the end of the day, like this is a really good performing Super Duty. As I've said on many other videos, 20 years ago, these trucks rolled like trash. Today, they ride so much better. We're gonna get off at exit 11. 
so we'll have to remember this for the next drive. So, so far, oh, wow. Yeah, 19.4. I think I drove a trimmer on this route at one point. I have to go back and look through my videos, but I did not get 19.7. Wow. That's actually really good. We've only driven seven miles, but we'll probably get caught at the light both times. And then, yeah, like I said, let's go ahead and see how loud the interior is. And then from there, we should be making our way back to the dealership so you guys can see where we end off at. Well, 64, 65. 66, 67. About 63. Yeah, 62, 63 back there, so. This cab definitely does feel a lot bigger, as I said earlier. I almost don't even have to put the seat all the way back. Like, you have a power steering column. You still have power pedals. Yeah, 10 weight driver's seat. The cooled seats work great on these pickups, too, by the way. It's, it's only 79 degrees outside, but the sun is so hot out here in Utah. And, yeah, this is really a really good pickup from Ford. I think they've done a great job. The power, the technology they added to this truck is really hard to compete with, even on the GM side of the house. Even though they are really doing their own thing on that side in terms of pricing and just what they give you for the money, I still think Ford has a great pickup truck. I almost forgot to do this. We gotta test out this exhaust rate. You ready for this? This might be the first, there it is. Yeah. This didn't do that great this time. Now I have noted in the past, the exhaust brake has been improved on the Fords 100%. But, 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 I still think Ram is mopping the floor with GM and Ford's like it's just not that great now look what Ford did offer us for 2023 gauge measurement so here's all the temperatures so you guys have an idea of some of this so you can compare it to the Ram all right so we'll just go ahead and stop alongside these F-150s so we're at 20.6 14.9 miles driven in about 16 almost 17 minutes basically now let's go ahead and drive this Ram this Ram has kind of a mountain to climb here we're driving the Ram, and I can tell that this truck is definitely smaller. I think where you see most of the the difference is the roof and this the overall space where your legs are. The seats though are still pretty comfortable for the most part, but yeah, this truck is definitely lacking in size. Now that could be a good thing for some. It does feel a lot more cozier inside the truck, but it's definitely more compact and I think I would prefer the bigger cab. But let's go ahead and talk about this Cummins and then we're gonna do the 060. As you guys heard earlier, Ford has the option to have the standard output and high output power stroke. With the Ram, you only can get the standard output with the three quarter tons. 850 pound feet of torque, 370 horsepower, which is really lacking behind the Ford. Here we go. It was eight something. I thought it was eight. Wow. For some weird reason, I thought it said eight point something. But you know, that was wow. So 060 for the Ram was 10.03. Now, normally the standard output Cummins does a lot better because the 68 RP transmission, which is a six speed, it typically puts the power down. Now, this truck does have a 373 out back. Um, yeah. 
I'll have to show you guys which truck is heavier at some point. I'll do it at the end of the video. I'll show you guys how heavy this truck is compared to the Ford. But, you know, that's the difference between that V8 power show versus the inline six. Even if the trucks had identical power numbers, that V8 just has a little bit more run off the line. And this truck has the 373s. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these RPMs so we can kind of get a comparison between the two. So at 70 miles an hour, let me go ahead and put my cruise control on. We're just over 1500 RPMs. Hopefully you guys can see that. At 75. We're like at like, maybe that's 1800 RPMs. So not too bad. I mean, 373s with this transmission, I mean, you're not running high RPMs. So I would say, hey, they're almost pretty similar. I think the Ford might be a little bit lower, but nevertheless, Ram's not doing too bad on that regard. As far as the Ram goes, here are the numbers on the door. Gross axle rating up front is going to be 6,000. Rear is 6,040. And then you have a 10,000 pound GVWR. All in payload is 2,083 pounds. And here we are. We are definitely behind that Ford right now. But not too far behind. The test ain't over yet. Now we did catch the light both times. And at 18.4, I want to save it around like 19 something with that Super Duty. So we'll have to kind of see where it ends off at. But let's go ahead and see how loud this truck is. About 65, 67, 62, 63 in the back. So they're pretty similar in terms of like the uh, sound. I would say the four might be just a little bit more quieter, just a little bit. I can hear the Cummins a lot better in this truck. And it's probably because it's running at a slightly higher RPM, just a little bit higher RPM. And something I noticed too, with the Ford, they give you all the gears. With Ram, you have to set it up in the system so you can see what gear you're in. And I do like Ford's battery because you don't have to do anything. It's just already there. You can see exactly what gear you're in. And I love that about the Ford trucks. But I think I still like Ram's interior the best. I, it doesn't matter. They're all nice. But if I had to choose between all three of them, it's always gonna be Ram. I just like this a lot better. And I could just be biased, maybe that's what it is, because I owned it for so much longer. But I think I just like the ergonomics of everything that they have. It's just easier to use. I find that in Ford, I've done a lot of testing with them and I just get lost in their infotainment. Rams is just a little bit easier to use. And I think it's just more user friendly. But let me go ahead and show you guys the exhaust brake and some of the temperatures. All right, let's go ahead and turn the exhaust brake on. Both trucks have two-stage exhaust brakes. Oh, wow. I'm still accelerating and it's still trying to stop me. Yeah. This is no comparison. The Ram's exhaust brake is really strong. And, yeah. I think that it has to be the inline six design somehow and that's why it just does such a great job now as far as the temperatures go here's the transmission the oil temp coolant temp so yeah this truck i think runs a little bit cooler compared to the ford although they set their thresholds for those types of things so even if it is higher for the transmission temperature that's how they want it to run at those higher temperatures so Let's go ahead and see where we end off at, and then that will pretty much end this video. Just pull back in, and we're gonna go ahead and stop by these F-150s again, right here. 
17.8 wow so ford really cleaned up today like really cleaned up destroyed the ram in every single category so ram i hope you watch this video because you have a lot of work to do and i didn't even talk about the fuel tank capacity in the video but you'll see it on the chart 34 gallon fuel tank for the ford 31 gallon for the ram and yeah i mean the payload capacity if you didn't watch the video i did before this one i discussed all that stuff so yeah i'm really looking forward to seeing what ram does and even though this was kind of a bloodbath the ram trucks have always been slow <laughs> they've always been the slowest truck but i will admit these trucks shine under load and even if the ford's a little bit faster the exhaust brake is second to none i mean it's really the best of the best but i hope you guys liked the video special shout out again to larry h miller chrysler jeep dodge ram in sandy utah and larry h miller super ford here in salt lake city if you are in the market be sure to reach out to diego he did help me with the keys today so be sure to ask for him at the ford store and then nafo at the ram store see you guys soon